Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Keyboard Universe. Just kidding. Hope everyone is doing well today. Um, this is just an off-the-cuff uh, video that I'm making today. I didn't actually plan to make any videos, but I do have to lube some of these. Um, these are Gatoron uh, Milky Pros. I think they're the Milky Pros. I can't keep up with the models anymore. Um, but even though they, they do sound pretty good um, on lube, you get rid of some of that tickiness and that slight ping that it has uh, with it being lubed. Now, I've, I've explained several times on the sub, I have my own uh, way of lubing. Yes, I have tried and I do own Crytox and Tribosis and have done the paintbrush method of lubing with bag lubing the springs. Um, I have a bit of neuropathy, so it's hard for me to, to paintbrush these tiny little things and can take me hours to do a batch of 90. Now I chose 90 because that's kind of in the middle. I mean, I know there's not a lot of people using full size boards, so they are, but most people are using, you know, 75, 80% or lower. So I think 90 was a, was a good middle ground. That's usually, well, I mean, truthfully, I'll, I'll buy them in 110 if they have them, but most of the time I buy 90. But anyway, this one I need for a board that has 84 keys. So I'm just going ahead and doing the 90 batch in case I need any extra. But because of the lube method, cramping my hands and making it very difficult, I've gone through a few different methods. Uh, first up is using the actual super lube um, bottle, put the tip on it. it, was way too huge and I was soaking my switches in nothing but oil, which just made them more squishy. It didn't really help. I mean, it made them, you know, much glide much smoother but uh there was a lot of binding because of the extra oil there was way too much oil in there i mean literally you could sometimes press them and oil would come out it was almost as bad as what i've seen some people doing like the spray pressure or putting the super lube and you know without opening the switch so uh, over time i've worked out different methods i changed uh, a couple of different bottles and i found this one um it was on AliExpress. It doesn't have a name. It just came with um, different uh, colored tube tops, and each tube top has a, I'll call it a syringe, but it's just a hollowed out uh, metal tube. And they all have a different uh, width. I think this one was gauge zero, if I'm not mistaken. And previous ones I tried were like gauge triple zero, I think, or vice versa. Um, but I found this one to be, if I went any bigger, too much. If I went any smaller, it, nothing would come out because I just squeeze it and it would just get bound up. Now, what I use is roughly, I don't weigh this out, um, I do take the bottle and look at it in the light so I can actually kind of gauge how much of the grease is in there and how much of the oil is in there. And the oil, really, the only purpose the oil serves is to kind of help the grease to come out. Um, I mean, grease is, grease and oil are the same thing. Grease just has a different viscosity. So um, I just want to ensure that the parts that need to remain, um, you know, lubricated will remain lubricated as opposed to, you know, oil falling off because we are dealing with a vertical application uh, that the grease is, you know, going to stay on there, but it's not going to leak and it's not going to get into places it shouldn't get into. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole Crytox, Superlube brand, everything like that, except to say that I have yet to find the initial source where somebody of any, you know, with any scientific background, uh, scientific evidence presented the first time that said we need to lube switches with Crytox 205 grade zero or vice versa. Crytox is made by the Keymores company, which is a split off of the DuPont company. Uh, Durox is used for high pressure, high temperature, industrial and scientific applications. The, the tolerances, the heat tolerances, uh, the, the friction tolerances that, that this lubricant can, for, uh, can take is thousands of times more 
than whatever is necessary. Now, Super Lube is a multi-purpose, but it's used a lot in the marine industry, um, as well as some other brands. And they're still meant to perform at higher temperatures and higher pressures than we're ever going to see in a, um, in a switch. So if for some reason you prefer the application, for one, I'm not telling anyone that this is the way that you need to loop. This is just the way that I do it. But if for some reason you want to save some money while also, you know, changing up your products and, you know, test yourself, do a batch you know, using Crytox or Tribosis or whatever brand you use, and then, you know, take this, take the grease and put it in a little container and use a, you know, paintbrush and lube it up using this stuff. And I, I'm positive. I mean, if I'm wrong, please come and correct me, but I'm positive that you're not going to be able to tell the difference between the two uh, via the application. Now, if, you now, like I said, when I first started doing this method, I was doing more of a 60 40 50 50 mix was getting way too much oil my only real issue was i was getting too much on there and the trick with this is a little goes a long way now i've already filled up this bottle um i guess i should have made a video uh but basically uh, it, it, it's a it's a bit of a process because it is a little bottle uh but basically um i use you know light is kind of my gauge as you can see there's if I push on it, it starts to bubble up, and basically I just use the um, the suction that's going to go back down to suck a little bit of this grease back on in here. See? And like I said, I just filled it, so I'm not going to do a whole bit of the hair on there. All right. But that's just just to give you an example of how i do it and then like i said i add a little bit of the group the, the oil in there and i shake it up and that it's funny because basically i'm using the oil as lubrication for the grease if that makes any sense um and yes sometimes the the oil does come out that's fine um as there's always a little bit of grease in there and when you see me shake it it's actually trying to make sure that I'm bringing the grease down to the bottom so that it's not only the oil. Uh, I know that it doesn't completely mix in there, but when it applies, there seems to, as I've seen thus far, it seems to be a good healthy mix. And as long as I'm not using too much, I've ended up with um, some pretty good results. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna turn on my timer. Uh, try it for it not to get my mug from a bad angle. I'm going to turn on my timer. I'm going to take these 90 switches. Uh, I, I will say these, because they're, be, they're gator on, these are um, <clears throat> I got some sort of notification. These are four legs instead of the, the wing latch switches. So uh, wing latch usually take me a bit longer. Although I've gotten to the point that I will actually watch TV show while doing these now and just because I've, I've got it down to a bit of a science but I have not timed it I mean sometimes you know obviously watching TV shows sometimes I'll just get stuck watching a particular scene and you know the rest of it I'll do while I'm just kind of listening or commercial or whatever so I've never timed it but had a member you know ask um, how is it that you do how many switches do you do per minute I don't know so I'm gonna I'm gonna time it. I'm just gonna do a video. Obviously, the video will be in faster frame. I don't know, 24 times uh, the speed, so that we can get through it. But I'm kind of curious myself. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and uh, set up a a timer. And uh, well, I guess let's go ahead and get started. How long will it take me to lube 90 switches using my time budget lube method, uh, which is an 80 80 percent grease? 20% super lube oil. Let's go.
32 and a half. So, let me see, that's 30 minutes times 60, that's 1800 seconds. Anyway, plus 32 minutes to do 90 switches. So that's roughly two and a half switches per minute, roughly. Um, so now you've seen it, you saw how I did it. Now, uh, here's a stock one. It sounds good, except there is a little bit of a ping. This is one that I just lewed. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but there is a difference. These are lubed. They now work proficiently. Um, you probably could tell or maybe notice the shaking that I had, and you can see why I can't do the paintbrush way. If I tried to paint a Bob Ross painting, they think Dali had had a hand in it because it would not have any straight lines. Uh, my neuropathy prevents me from having um, good dexterity uh, with small things. So I don't know. You know, I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it. I am saying this is a way that works for me. I've perfected it. It started out where it didn't work quite as well because I was putting way too much um, oil and not enough grease, not all, any grease at all. Once I, uh, you know, basically changed up the recipes using the scientific process, seeing how well one worked versus how well another one didn't work, I found this to be... Uh, my salvation and now I can I can lube switches because I mean it's an important thing for many switches I mean there are some great stock switches and they come pre lubed and you can just plug and play but there are many many decent switches that become great switches once lubed so this the way that I'm doing it here this is what I call my time budget lube method um, I should call it when I can't do it with the paintbrush method. It doesn't really matter. This is the way that I do it and it works for me. Um, perhaps it might work for you. Perhaps it doesn't. But again, when it comes to the oils or the grease, as long as you're using a dielectric grease uh, that's silicone based, um, you should be fine. Obviously, you don't want to use petroleum jelly, anything that's got organic material in it because that will degrade the plastic. But when it comes to these two, they're going to work just fine. Uh, paying more for Crytonx, you're just paying more. It's overkill. That's my opinion. It's overkill. I have a friend of mine that works at a university department of uh, material sciences. Also said the same thing. It's overkill. He's like, it's not like it's bad to use that other stuff, but there's just no reason for it. He's like, even if you could be pressing the switch 10,000 times a second, you're not going to generate the types of friction, load, and temperatures um, to even come close to the tolerances of this product. So anyway, that was my, um, my how many switches, or how long does it to take to lube 90 switches? So for me, it was roughly 33 minutes. Um, which I think is pretty good. Like I said, I, I usually do a batch of 90 for a, an hour show, you know, 45 minute to an hour show. I usually do a batch of 90, but obviously uh, here I was just focusing on these and uh, getting these done. So anyway, if that helps anybody, I hope that it does, that, that would be awesome. If you have any questions about this, if you want me to make a video, I could find an empty bottle and do one from scratch. It is a... It, it, it's a process, but it's not super difficult. Um, and once a bottle is filled up, I can do probably around three to four hundred switches from one bottle, as you could tell from you know the amounts that I use. And with this method, the key is less is more. So I hope that I uh, you know at least entertained and gave you guys some ideas on different ways you know everything is not set in stone this is a hobby as long as you're not breaking stuff. i mean hey and if you're breaking stuff it's your own stuff so as long as you're not pushing other people's to break it anyway there's different ways to do you know different things and 
we can share all these different methods. There doesn't have to be only one way or only one product. Um, and I just, that's the only thing that I'm trying to say. So uh, with that, I bid everyone adieu for the day. I wish you a happy holiday season if you're celebrating. And uh, keep calm and keep word on. Cheers. <laughs>